Well, let's start wiring up these Crossfire RX Nano RX Pro receivers. Again, I'm going to be using this wire wrap wire. There's good points to that and bad points to that. First of all, it's a solid conductor wire, therefore it, it breaks. Uh, we use multi-stranded wire and we don't solder them in DuPont connectors because we don't want to turn it back into a kind of a one conductor that breaks. So that is one of the negative parts of wire wrap wires. It is solid conductor and it breaks. <laughs> That said, as long as it isn't broken, it works wonderfully. It's small, it's light, it's easy, it's quick to solder. There's just all sorts of things about it. So I'll show you what i am got in mind with this wire wrap wire as we solder up these receivers. Uh, what I've laid out here is the three RX Pros and then I've got one of each color. There's eight wires here, eight inches long. Each color of the uh, wire wrap wire. And I'm going to try to set these up exactly the same. I've got to match the color code if I can on my six pin DuPont connectors. And these are those DuPont connectors. You'll notice the one in the far end here is red and then black. I have to move those two around and all these connectors to give me my black on the outboard side as I need. So, we'll start soldering these things together. So my colors match my wire wrap wire except for this white wire right here on the end. I have a red, a black, a yellow, a blue, a green. But then I have orange and purple. So, the white one's going to be brown, I believe. I laid everything out on the sorter station. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do uh, all three of them at the same time. But I've laid out my wires. Three black, three red, three yellow, three blue, three green, and three brown. I'm going to put the black one on all three of them first, and then the red one on all three of them, and then the yellow on all three of them. That way, um, soldering the black to this one, then the black to this one, and during the time I'm soldering to this one and this one, this one's cooling back down, just taking some of the temperature out of it. Then I'll come back with the second wire on this one, this one, and this one. And the intention there again is just to keep as much heat out of the components as at all possible. I'm going to do my best to show this. This is going to be difficult at best. Okay, right there is a surface mount component that I've got to be careful of. Oops. Right there. And then there's another one right there that I have to be careful of when I'm soldering this. There aren't, well, on the back side, there's two in this area. And another one over in that same area, just around this pin. So rather than solder from this side where there's at least three, I'll go ahead and stay on this side where there's only two to worry about, it looks like. So I'll bring the pin through from the back, the wire through from the back, and then I'm going to come in in this direction with the soldering iron and just quickly solder that ground up right there. And the same thing up here when I solder this one. I told you this is going to be hard to show. When I solder this one, I'm going to come in with the soldering iron from this direction and touch that real quick to solder it. So that's my plans. You remember. <laughs> I destroyed one of these with the first 
ones I got by not pre-planning my soldering properly. Okay, ready, set, go. And I immediately ran into a problem. Uh, easy to work around it, but this 30 gauge wire is so small. Let's see if I can do this that it goes through the holes down here in this part of the receiver the whole wire goes through the holes you see <laughs> and up here it won't oops through these holes so these holes was why i bought the 30 gauge wire two i have to solder two up here not particularly these. I just wanted to use it on all of them so I can gather the wires up down here in sort of a strain relief, but I'll show more about that. So, have to be a little careful. Strip the wire and then make sure just a portion sticking through because you want the insulation on this side to go. Actually, it would be great if the insulation went right up to the metal, the pad and then solder inside and on this side so first problem well, sort of a problem oh i'm going to lose my sunday school language i just destroyed this receiver after i sorted that wire on the ground wire there was wire sticking out of the sorter so i reached in with these dikes to cut the top off of that uh, wire above that solder and I reached in too far just old and a little shaky I reached in too far and before I knew it I had already squeezed with that surface mounted component in the way and I crushed it <laughs> oh man let's see if I can show it to you better oops I'm not sure you can see it, but right there is the crushed remnants of that surface mounted component. And there's a good receiver right below it that I've already sorted on that ground wire. And I've also clipped the wire that was sticking up out of the sorter on this bottom one right here with no damage to that surface mount component right there. But you can see that one has been turned into powder. How about that? That's the way my look. So there you go. There's what the back looks like. Six wires. And there's the front. All soldered, clipped, <laughs> without crushing any more of the surface mount components. So, I'm already down one uh, receiver. Man. And now that I've got those six wires sorted on, I'm just going to pull all the rest of the wires down lengthwise and cut them off straight. That's it. That's my receiver wiring this time on the Crossfire Nano Pro. Let me get the other one over here. And there's the second one. Can't tell if that's focused. <laughs> that's the front. That's the back. Flip a couple of antennas onto them. Oh, there we go. I put the shrink tubing that comes with it on it. Doesn't really give any strain relief on the wires. I wish there was something I could do about that. I did try to put a little tie wrap here that I was going to put inside this shrink wrap with a little hot glue, but the shrink wrap, I mean, the tie wrap just wouldn't go small enough to capture the wires so that is a concern of mine there's no strain relief on these wires couple that with solid conductor wires 
me. So now then, that's the RX side of the problem fixed antennas wiring. Destroyed one out of three of them. Boy, that makes me mad. <laughs> so now I need to put my six pin DuPont connectors on them and then we can physically test them. There's one of them sorted up. Got ground and supply voltage, then CRS transmit and receive, and then Mavlink receive and transmit on the white out at the end. So there's a brand new uh, Crossfire Nano RX Pro that I just got in two days ago. And let's do the second one. And there's the second one with a six pin DuPont connector connected to it. All the wire colors are exactly the same on both ends except for this white wire right here, which goes to the brown wire on the receiver. So there's two of those. Uh, of course, three of three is destroyed. <laughs> Well, the first one plugged in okay, of course, and came up in binding mode, and right now it's binding uh, to my transmitter. So we'll start testing right after that. Okay, here goes. Uh, the rule of thumb on this is uh, it has 60 seconds to be successful in connecting right after I click this okay right here. Click. You see we have a high level of link quality down here and we're reading perimeters if all these perimeters read in in less than 60 seconds people have told me you're going to be fine I watched bona fide pirate fly this morning uh, he was down low on a roadway and his crossfire telemetry seems to have held. So I have great hopes for this. Uh, he hasn't really said much about that yet. I'm sure he will. It was a great little 20, 28 minutes or so this morning with Bonafide Pirate. All right. I'm going to call that. Well, it ran all the perimeters in in 60 seconds. I have another good Nano RX Pro. Good for testing. And let's test number two. Boy, I wished I hadn't damaged that third one. <laughs> and here we go. Give me 60 seconds on the clock. And there we go. Reading in perimeters. And they seem to be reading in at a rate and my experience that this is going to be fine and we're maintaining a hundred percent link with this and I happen to know the power is on minimum of course we're on the bench here 15 feet apart uh, so uh, I'm gonna call this good too so I have two new good crossfire Nano RX Pro receivers that I can experiment with telemetry. I'm beginning to feel more and more comfortable with telemetry. Alright guys, not sure what else to say here except for if I can get some medical apparatus out of my body tomorrow, hopefully next week I'll be flying and testing some of this stuff. Thank you guys so much.